So it's England versus Finland, Women's Euro 2005, Match of the Day live on BBC Two now. Here on BBC One, more 20th century collectible. Guinevere and Lancelot, you'd probably think I was at a round table banquet or performing in some Celtic legend, but they're actually the names of these huge dishes at Goonhilly in Cornwall, the largest satellite station on Earth, and a perfect place to look at the development of communications in the 20th century. things to do here at the Goonhilly Visitor Centre. You know, you can even send an email into outer space. I wouldn't hold your breath for a reply. But while these giant antennae are tracking satellites in the heavens, down here on Earth, our experts are trying to track down 20th century treasures. We'll just not find anything out of this world. As for me, well, it's time I emailed an alien. Right, I think the aliens have arrived. It must have been that email I sent earlier. Somebody sent for the doctor. Uh, Goonhilly, with its enormous satellite dishes, has a strangely futuristic feel. It could almost be used as a setting for a Doctor Who episode. And of course, there's a huge interest in Doctor Who at the moment, what with the new series. But it's inspired collectors since that first episode way back in 1963. Now, I've seen some eccentric collectors in my time, but we've actually found a Doctor Who fan whose collection lives with him. Cheeky lot. Now, who on earth, or who on Gallifrey, would live in a house like that? Hello. Oh, hello. Are you the new doctor, then? I really wish I was, Alan, but <laughs> no, no, I'm just a, a mad collector. A mad collector. Chris, the mad collector. It seems to be an enormously eccentric thing to collect, but it's obviously hugely popular with Doctor Who Yeah, stuff. indeed. How did you get started? Well, I enjoyed it. As a, as a kid, I mean, I'm 44, so I managed to see the series right from the very start in the early 60s. And I, it's the old cliche, but I was, yes, hiding behind the sofa when the Daleks appeared on screen. <laughs> What's your particular passion, then, about Doctor Who? Which bits do you go for? The, I, I, I go for the bits that frightened me most when I was that particular age. So, number one, Daleks, number two, Cybermen. Well, funny enough, on this 1960s television here, Aha. we can see an episode, or a bit of an episode, from that first series that featured the Daleks. Excellent. Doctor? Doctor, come quickly! The Daleks! The movement scanners have located the enemy time machine, TARDIS. TARDIS! 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 Doctor, he said the TARDIS. TARDIS! 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 TAR
And look on their screen, that's us. What is more important, he referred to the TARDIS as the enemy time machine. Is this not a real one, then? Oh, look. <laughs> I moved a Dalek. It's, it's not real. It's, it's an exact replica of a 1970s-style Dalek, the ones that, of the type that would start with Tom Baker. Yeah. Um, and I, I featured in it in a particular um, chocolate bar advert a couple of uh, years ago on television. So you get inside well. and drive this, then? I'm afraid I do, yeah. Well, it might only be a replica, but it, it must have cost quite a bit to have made. It, it did. I mean, to get a good job, you have to pay a good price. And uh, this one cost me, I think, around the 13, 1400 mark. Oh, I thought it might have been more than that. So I think mm. it's probably quite good value. Mm. Now, this guy scared me. Ah, to say, Davros. Davros. Yes, oh, indeed. He's very spooky. Yeah, <laughs> he made his first appearance in this guise in the 1970s with Tom Baker's Doctor. Um, this is to the exact measurements of the original, which is uh, in an exhibition in Blackpool. So this is another replica? It's, not it's the another real replica. Thing. It's another replica, but again, with me, I just, I just want them to be as close as possible. It's the correct materials used, the correct fabric, the correct pattern for the uh, jacket, and the head is moulded from the original. It must have been fiendishly difficult being inside this costume, very uncomfortable. Michael Wisher was the original actor, sadly no longer with us, but he played the first Davros. He could see barely anything at all through the <laughs> eyes, so to get into character in the early rehearsals, he actually wore a paper bag over his head <laughs> and sat in a swivel chair. He was committed shortly afterwards. He was. <laughs> yes, <laughs> indeed, yes. You know, another thing that really used to... Um, upset me was was these flies because ah, I like garden insects, yeah. but these chats were nasty bits of work. Yeah, right? now he is he is one of the most fragile bits I've got. <laughs> he was made in 1973 when John Pertwee was the Doctor uh, in a, an episode called The Green Death. Ah, well, you take off for a little bit and we'll have a look at that episode from 1973, The Green Death. What's happened? What a beautiful creature. So we had Daleks in the 60s. Yep. Davros in the 70s. Yes. And this particular sort of Cyberman that particular in, one. in the 80s. Indeed, and yeah. Are these original props? They are both original props, both Cybergun, one earlier than the other. This is the earliest original I've got. This is from Attack of the Cybermen from the 1980s with uh, Colin Baker as the Doctor. And it's interesting, because when I got it, it, was, it had been battered at the front. And what they used to make that front section was one of these 1980s car air freshener. You are a scourge of your local garage and the I local know. hardware shop, I know. aren't you? Really? I know, I know. You can put Doctor Who together. So I managed to find a, um, a prop builder who still had a couple of these left in an old box and he put it together again, so we've got it completely reconstructed. And this, this gun cost me um, about... I think it was about £750. Gosh. But they are very unusual to find in any sort of decent, half-decent condition, because most of them were damaged on set because they're not strongly built. So what would you pay for it now? I don't know. I've been offered 1500 and then maybe it'll go with, you know. Gosh. With the new series, things could go higher. Nobody knows. If people haven't got that kind of money, there's still plenty they can collect in terms of oh, Doctor yeah, yeah. memorabilia, isn't there? Toys started appearing in the 60s, that's from the 70s. This is all present-day stuff, widely available, from cookie jars to salt and pepper sellers to little talking Daleks, to collectible cards. There's everything out there, hundreds of items. I think it'll take them a while to catch you up. Thank you very much indeed, Chris. A pleasure. Doctor Who? What you'll be able to tell me Folk are the first people in history to be connected to each other with a worldwide network of telephone, internet, satellite and cable. With all this new technology, communication has never been easier. But there's just one thing. How do you operate one of these? Till the next time on 20th Century Roadshow. Ta da! The 20th Century Roadshow next Sunday is at the earlier time of 5.35 here on BBC One. Stunning landscapes that have inspired artists and writers. David Dimbleby presents a new series, A Picture of Britain, tonight at 9 here on BBC One. <laughs> More valuable information and a price guide to 20th century collectibles in this book to accompany the series.